How to become confident. People have told me for a few years, gosh, you just seem so confident. How are you so confident? And it's because I understand first the difference between confidence and arrogance. Arrogance is not something that people are going to compliment. It means that you're kind of snobby about your belief in yourself. But I understand the difference between that and true confidence is just a rooting in your beliefs and a knowledge of who you are as a person. And a lot of people will say, well, I don't really know who I am or I don't really know what my strengths are. And that's part of what I help people do. So I'm glad that you're here because that's that's part of my mission here is to help people develop that. So today we're going to go through several points about confidence, how you can help to cultivate your own confidence and not only feel more confident in here, but portray more confidence to the outside world, which is going to bring more positivity to the outside world, which will bring more positivity back to you because that is how energy works. If that sounds good to you, stick around. Um, I'll be right back. But before I come back, I would love it if you would subscribe to this channel, click the subscribe button and the little bell so that you learn when I drop videos like this to help you live a happier, lower stress and more successful life. I'll be right back. Guild Coaching. More success, less stress. Okay, we're going to talk about how to build your confidence today, but before we even talk about how to do that, let's just define what confidence is. So I talked about arrogance a minute ago. That's just, you know, kind of a haughty belief, an egotistically driven belief that you're great, but not just great, that you're better than other people. I'm not better than anyone else. I'm just different. I'm uniquely myself and so are you. So true confidence is rooted in your beliefs. It's your beliefs in your abilities. It's your, your beliefs in your, your overall self-worth and it's your beliefs in your judgments. And that's very important. Confident people can make decisions. People who lack confidence are often very indecisive. And you'll notice that in business. I Years ago, years and years ago, I mean like, a long time ago, one of my very, very first roommates, um, when I was in college, we went, we were not living in a dorm situation. We were living in an apartment and we were going to redecorate and we had to share a bathroom. It was a two bedroom apartment, with one bathroom. And, um, she said she wanted to decorate the kitchen. I said, I'll decorate the bathroom. So we went shopping for everything. And, um, I like things that are light and white. I like bright colors. I mean, clearly you see my office just like lots neat neat lines, white and blue. And, you know, just, that's just kind of me. Um, but I, I said, you know, I just want it to be clean and white and bright. So I want a little bit of color, but, and we walked into one store and I saw this shower curtain that was just beautiful. It was white and it had these little pockets, um, sewn into it. And inside the pockets were these little fake flowers. It kind of looked like daisies, like pink and yellow. And I think a little bit of blue, um, there was purple and, um, it's been a long time. So now I'm remembering the shower curtain and I said, Oh, that one. And she was like, well, let's look around some more and see. And I was like, do you like it? She said, yeah. I said, that's the one that's, you know, it, it hits on all angles. It's beautiful. It's light. Um, it has different colors. It kind of reflects both of our personalities. Let's just grab it. And so it took me about five minutes to get all this stuff to decorate the bathroom. We shopped for kitchen stuff for about two, three hours. And was it fun to shop? Yes. Do we like looking around? Yes. Did she insist that we look at more bathroom stuff along the way? Yes. But did we ever did we ever make a different decision? No, I can just make that decision like that because I'm confident. I know what I like when I see it. I don't need to think about it anymore. And that is what really, really confident people do. And it's not just with decorating things. It's with anything. Am I going to make this investment? Am I going to um, pursue this relationship? It's understanding who you are understanding your true nature, understanding your moral compass, your abilities, your worth, and then being able to make those judgments. So that is what true confidence is. So the first thing that you really need to know in order to start developing confidence is you need to have a good handle on your strengths. So if you are someone who says, I have no idea what my strengths are, here's what I want you to do. You grab a pad of paper, flip to a, a clear, man, I take a lot of notes, y'all. Flip to a clean page in your pad of paper, and then I want you to grab a pen or a pencil, I'm gonna grab a pencil, and then I want you just to sit here like this, 
And then ask yourself, what do I do that nobody else does? Or what do I do that other people don't do as well as me? Write those things down. If you say, there's nothing that I do that nobody else does, and there's nothing that I do better than anybody else. What do you do that's as good as somebody else? Or let's take other people out of it. What do you do that feels good to you? What do you do that uses your strengths? There are lots of things that I do that feel good and uses my, use my strengths. It's why I'm constantly learning. I mean, I'm a teacher here for you. I'm a teacher, coach, mentor for other people, but I'm also always somebody's student because I'm always learning. It feels good. It's why I, I'm a psychotherapist, but while practicing as a psychotherapist, I became a coach. I became an energy healer. I became a yoga teacher. I became, I'm all of these different things. Why? Because it feels good to, to be expanding. So I know one of my strengths is I can learn really faster than just about anybody. I can learn and expand and that feels good because I can learn and expand. I'm actually a pretty good teacher so I can teach. I can show people how things work. I can explain things to people in meaningful ways. That's why I'm here. And I get comments like that all the time. Hey, nobody's ever explained this like this before. It really landed for me. Awesome. And then that feels good. That's an emotional paycheck. Write down the things that you're good at. I'm really creative. I'm good with art. I'm I'm good with um, uh, creative projects, any like crafty things. I'm good when I'm working with little kids. I love little kids and animals love doing that kind of stuff. What are you good at? It doesn't matter if it's professional, just write down everything. Professional, personal, um, things that are ambitions of yours, anything connected with anything. One thing that I'm really good at that people, what are things that you're good at that other people have said, wow, you're really good at that. Write that down. Even if it's not your own personal belief that you're good at that thing, if other people, especially more than one, have, have, have noticed that you're good at this or that a strength lies in a particular area, write that down. Let's start building your own belief in yourself in that area. I'm, I'm a pretty talented artist and painter. I didn't realize how talented I was until people started commissioning work from me because they saw stuff that I had done either for myself or to give as gifts for other people. Well, I mean, I didn't list that in the things that I've gone to school to learn, but I am the granddaughter of a very, very talented watercolorist who taught me how to paint when I was little. I don't do watercolor. That was her disappointment in me, but whatever, uh, you know, but I'm still very, very good with vision and color and things of that nature. Okay. So write down those strengths, your talents, your achievements, the things that make you unique. If nobody else can do these things, write them down even bigger and underline them and put little stars and hearts around it. Okay. The more unique it is, the bigger it is for you. Then number three here. So number one, I wanted to explain to you about what, what this was, what confidence is to begin with. Number two, developing confidence by uncovering your strengths. Number three, develop confidence by achieving goals. And I don't mean you have to achieve a big goal. The number one goal, if you, if you're trying to, to build your confidence, this is what I want you to do every single day. When you get up out of bed and you stretch and you do your gratitude, hopefully you're doing all those things that I've encouraged you to do so many times. I want you to straighten your bed. You don't have to make it like military grade for a quarter to pop off the top, but I want you to straighten it. I want you to make it straight, flatten the sheet out, pull up the top cover, make the pillows nice. I've heard people say, I'm just going to mess it up tonight anyway. Okay, great. Mess it up tonight. It's going to feel better to get into a nice, neat bed. It will. Make your bed. Here's the reason that making your bed is so important. Making your bed is a goal. And when your brain experiences the completion of a goal, it checks that off. It feels good. It's like, oh, she did this. Then all of a sudden it's like, oh, I can do this. I can check things off of my achievement list. It's why little tiny, tiny, and that's nothing. Making your bed, what does that take? A minute and no, zero talent, right? So tiny, tiny little goals are so important for little children. Little bit color inside the lines, very good. You kept the color inside the line. That's a little goal. And then they can look at their work and they can be proud of it. Little tiny things. 
set little bitty goals for yourself every day with the sole intention of knowing that you're going to be able to complete them just so you can complete them. Just so you can start telling your subconscious mind, this is easy. I can meet goals. Then when you meet a goal that's a little bit bigger than making your bed, it might be a little bit more out of your comfort zone, but you can say, you know what, if I did that goal, your subconscious mind will say, well, if I completed that other goal, I can complete this goal. And then your confidence starts to build naturally. Develop number four, develop self compassion. We are too hard on ourselves. And when we are hard on ourselves, our internal self-talk is negative. When your internal self-talk is negative, everything goes negative, including your confidence. We've got to be kind to ourselves. If you don't know what self-talk is, it is those little things that we say to ourselves silently, usually, sometimes out loud, I hope not, but silently up here, usually, it's the things that we say to ourselves about ourselves. Like, oh, you're so wonderful and you're so beautiful. Or, oh, gross, you're so fat. I can't believe you look like this. You're starting to look old. You're, do you say those things? Don't say those things. The world is mean enough. We don't need to say those things to ourselves at all, ever. Ever, ever, ever. And if you're one of those people who's sitting there and like, what if they're true? <laughs> Stop it. I don't care if they're true. There's a lot of negative things about me. I'm not going to sit here and beat myself up with them. I'm going to focus on the positive things about me so that I feel better about myself. So that then maybe I can win, win the internal battle over the negative things. True, not true. I don't care. Don't focus on them. Be compassionate with yourself. Be loving of yourself. Remember that however old you are, you are all of the versions of yourself. The one-year-old you, the two-year-old you, the three-year-old you, the whatever. If you have a hard time being compassionate with the you of today, imagine you at five years old and then talk to yourself the way that you would want someone to talk to her or him. Let that be the guide for your self-talk and then your self-compassion will grow and then your confidence will grow. And then lastly, take risks. Start with small risks. It's like the goals. Start with small goals. I'm just going to make my bed. Start with small risks that are slightly outside of your comfort zone. I call the comfort zone the failure zone because it's not really comfortable. It's just what's familiar. It's just what's repeated. So take little bitty risks, tiny, little small risks when you take risks and you achieve something through them or you finish and you're still alive and everybody's fine you start to have a greater sense of accomplishment you start to have a greater sense of who you are that belief in yourself grows your understanding of your strengths grow your number of strengths grow and then your confidence grows as well that is how to start growing your confidence from the ground up. If this video has been of help to you, give me that thumbs up, please. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell before you go so that you'll know the next time that we drop a video like this to help you live a better life. Cheers to developing your confidence. See you next time.